Get on the train Before it leaves the station The truth train is coming Gonna run them down Run them down Alrighty, so for those who are following the kind of, you know, the developments here of, you know, with Brexit and Scottish independence here on, on my Doctor Who channel, this is an interview on Good Morning Britain with Nicola Sturgeon. Nicola Sturgeon is the First Minister of Scotland. She's the leader of the SNP, uh, Scottish National Party. And so this is her and, and on with peers and on, you know, on the Good Morning Britain so it's interesting stuff. She's very articulate, very well spoken, and she, you know, she speaks a lot of good sense in my opinion. So, like I said, I'm not, I'm currently not sure if if independence is what Scotland needs and wants, but I am following this with um, a great interest, and uh, I. I ultimately want what's best for the people of Scotland. So, anyways, here's the interview with Nicola Sturgeon on Good Morning Britain. Who at Westminster is going mm -hmm. to deliver what you want? Because I think Boris Johnson's pretty much ruled it out. And I'm a little bit confused about the Labour <laughs> position on it, because uh, they seem Aren't to say in, on in, everything. in one case you might be able to have it, in another case it would be much better that you stayed part of the UK. So, what is your view? Labour or the Tories? Well, just as... Just as an aside, Jeremy Corbyn seems confused about most things and Boris Johnson, of course, said we'd leave the European Union on the 31st of October, do or die, so his word is not really worth very much. But my message to people in Scotland is if you want Scotland's voice to be heard, if you want our future to be in our hands, not in the hands of Boris Johnson or Jeremy Corbyn, then vote SNP to send that message loudly and clearly, because that's the only way to make Westminster politicians sit up and listen. Okay, but Jeremy... um, on mm. post-election arrangements, if, if there is a hung parliament, which is highly likely, which if the mm. SNP does well, would allow Scotland to hold the balance of power. I've said in the last two elections, I'll say it again in this one, I would never put a Conservative Prime Minister into office. I wouldn't have a formal coalition with anyone, uh, but I'd make sure Scotland's voice is heard and Scotland's interests are protected. And if people are worried about Jeremy Corbyn, and many people are worried about Jeremy Corbyn, then from a Scottish perspective, far better to have strong SNP voices in there, making sure that our voice is heard and we try okay. to keep whoever's in uh, Downing Street on a better track. But Jeremy Corbyn has a point, doesn't he? Labour does not support independence in Scotland, he says. We do not think another referendum is either desirable or necessary. It does seem to be mm. in contrast to uh, other members of his shadow cabinet. However, he says Scottish independence would mean a massive gap between what Scotland raises in taxation and what the Scottish people need at the present time. Isn't he right that it is a better option for you to be part of the UK? Well, Scotland, like most countries across the developed world, uh, has a deficit. Having more control over our economy and the direction our economy takes is a far better way of dealing with that than allowing these decisions to be taken by Westminster. We've just suffered a decade of Westminster austerity that has done real harm to our public services and the cohesion of our communities. But, of course, as we look ahead, the real and very present danger to Scotland's economic prosperity is Brexit. I mean, if you take Boris Johnson's proposed deal, uh, analysis shows that that will cost every person in Scotland £1,600 compared to remaining in the EU. So putting ourselves in charge of our own future, it's not a magic wand. Scotland, like every other country, would have challenges to overcome. But being in charge of our own destiny is a better well, way to try to overcome can I, can I just ask you about this? bad Does... decisions that are okay. against our interest to be taken at Westminster. Do, do you not understand well, Good morning, Piers. I thought you weren't there for a moment. I, you know, I was just letting two women, two independent women have a nice conversation. I'm that kind of guy. Um, <laughs> I get good, two questions, not like Nicola. <laughs> but good morning to you, First Minister. Do you not understand <laughs> the rather amusing irony of you sitting there and saying... Yeah, here's the thing. We want our independence, we want to go our own way, we want to have our own taxation, our own border control, our own everything. But Brexit's terrible. Brexit is awful. Brexit is ruinous, which is, of course, exactly what people who voted Leave assumed they would be getting 
here in relation to independence. How can you be such a great flag bearer for independence for yourself in Scotland and yet profess or pretend, as some would say, to hate independence down here for the Brexit scenario? I would, I would ask you to imagine positing that question to somebody from France or Germany or Spain or Portugal. The two things are not the same. These are all independent countries, but they're also members of the European Union, collaborating for the greater good on the issues that in the modern world individual countries can't deal with on their own. There is no contradiction between being independent and being a member of the European Union. Now, you know, it's up to England uh, if it wants to vote to leave the European Union. I disagree with that. But my fundamental point is that Scotland should not be taken out of the European Union when we didn't vote for that. More than 60% of people in Scotland voted to remain. And actually, regardless of how you voted in that referendum, Brexit has become a complete and utter mess. So I think this election is an opportunity, firstly, to escape the mess of Brexit because if Boris Johnson gets his way, then there'll be years and years and years of more wrangling. Uh, but secondly, to put our future into our own hands. OK. One well, of the big issues, last time the I biggest issue this. in Scotland in this election, is who decides our future? No, is it, it Boris Johnson it. or is it the people of Scotland? I get it. And, and we discussed it's... this before, and you didn't really have a very strong answer for me. Let's try again. When you get your independence, as you're clearly absolutely dead set to get, let's assume you get it in a few years' time, what are you going to do about the border with England? Have you thought about this yet? I did, give you a, I did give you an answer to that, and hopefully you'll listen this time if you, you didn't <laughs> grasp it the last time. I don't want borders. It's not any part of my policy to have borders. I want Scotland to continue to trade with the rest of the UK. That's important to the rest of the UK as well as to Scotland. But I also want to have, to have the opportunity to trade within the European single market, which is eight times bigger than the UK. It's not my policy to make people choose. And yeah, I okay, don't hang on, but hang on. Your policy... Okay, in terms your, of borders... Your policy... But, just to clarify, your policy... Unless I'm mistaken... I was going to finish my answer. Well, yeah, but uh, before you finish your answer, let me ask you another question. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a real classy reporting style there, Pierce. Let me interrupt your answer to ask you another question. <laughs> I, I, I got to say that this this Good Morning Britain show here, I mean, the, the, these two, you know, uh, what do you call them? Reporters, you know, whatever. I mean, they strike me like morning shock jocks on a radio station that's I mean a lot of their theatrics there are a lot of their tactics that they use and everything so but anyway yeah let me interrupt your answer to ask you a completely different question yeah that's not douchey at all <laughs> so it's this it's this if you were <laughs> to be successful in your independence your plan is to then apply to be a member of the EU as Scotland right yeah so then you have exactly the same border situation right, yeah. that we have in Ireland, right? You'd have the same situation. If you joined the no, EU, the, the, the... you would have to have some form of border with England, wouldn't you? I mean, why is it different for Scotland and England than it would well... be for North and South of Ireland? The point, I was, the point I was coming on to make is that's not my policy. Uh, it is not my policy to take the UK out of the European Union, out of the customs union, out of the single market. And, of course, we don't yet know. We may have grave concerns about the direction it's going in. We don't yet know what the ultimate relationship will be post-Brexit, if Brexit happens, between the UK and the EU. So uh, when Scotland is uh, considering the question of independence in a referendum, all of these issues will be debated in a very, very informed way, just as they were in 2014. But I'm saying to you very clearly, it's not my policy uh, to have borders uh, anywhere. I want no, uh, the, under, the maximum Nicola possible Sturgeon, under uh, Boris trade Johnson, and the freedom of trade under, in order that we... OK, but under Boris Johnson's deal, which is the current deal uh, on ICE at the moment, but we, as the UK, would be out of the customs union and we would be out of the single market. Now, if you got independence for Scotland, and went back into the EU, there would then have to be a border, a customs border, regulatory border between Scotland and the rest of the UK. The problem will be there. And that well, is an extraordinary situation because you would then have a, a hard border in Great Britain. But what I'm saying to you is it's not my policy to do that and I will be taking the steps to ensure that we have uh, the freedom of trade across the UK as we want to have across the European Union. 
That's also why I will continue to argue for uh, the UK not to go down Boris Johnson's road with being taken out, not just the European Union, the customs union, but the single market as well. Now, uh, when we see how these things end up, of course, uh, that position becomes clearer for people across the UK and for Scotland, and we take informed decisions about our future. But what is absolutely not in our interest, and all of the analysis, all of the expert opinion shows this beyond any doubt, it is not in the interest of uh, Scotland to be taken out of the European Union, the single market and the customs okay, union. And of course, if you problem. look at the position with the Republic of Ireland, since the Republic of Ireland has uh, been in the European Union, it's actually broadened its export base and got richer as a result. Uh, Scotland is a, a wealthy country with vast opportunities, uh, but those opportunities are undermined if we allow ourselves to be okay. dragged out of the European Scotland, Union. Scotland had, a ref Scotland had a referendum. We were told it was a once-in-a-lifetime referendum. And it had a result, and you lost. Uh, Brexit was supposed to be a once-in-a-lifetime EU referendum. And again, you lost. So you're a serial 100% loser on referendums. Well, right? hold on, the, a, minute. Hang on, hold on just, a minute, Piers. This, this this is, this is according like, to your rules, I'm allowed well, to finish my question. <laughs> my point is, having okay. lost every referendum that you've ever fought, right, why should anybody, if you did have another referendum, you somehow forced everybody's hand, why should anybody vote in that referendum? given that your belief is that it doesn't matter what referendum results come back, we simply ignore them. Well, th this is like your greatest hits, and you're as wrong on this characterisation as you've been every other time you've interviewed me. Let me just take you step by step through that. Scotland didn't vote for independence in 2014, and in case you haven't noticed, Scotland is not independent right now. Uh, that vote was respected, but circumstances have changed and people have a right to change their mind no, in any democracy. I didn't say democracy. it was. Hang on. I didn't and say on that. Vote, I said to you, hold on, let, I said let let to finish. you lost, you lost let the finish, referendum let me finish. and you don't like the result. You want to you play I've it again? And I've conceded that. But, but in a democracy, people always have the right to change their minds. In that referendum, we were told that we had to reject independence to protect our place in the European Union. Now we face being taken out against our will. So people in a democracy, when circumstances change, have every right to consider and reconsider a decision. But if you let me finish the second part of uh, my answer to your uh, multi-pronged question, <laughs> uh, then on the Brexit vote, of course, Scotland, <laughs> Scotland voted to remain in the EU. All I am trying to do on Brexit is to see Scotland's vote honoured and respected. We didn't vote to leave the European Union. Why should we be taken out against our will? And that's well, the because, crucial because issue you were in this part election of the United Kingdom. Who decides our future? Because whether you like and it or not, she doesn't well, want to be. And, and you keep, I know you don't want to be. You but keep the making people, this argument for me. Hang on, just to you remind you. You keep making this argument just, for me. It's no, brilliant. no, I'm not actually. Because just to remind you, the democratic will <laughs> of the Scot no, no, the democratic will of the Scottish people was to actually remain part of the UK. And the UK referendum on the EU was a UK referendum. So much as you'd like to say, well, the Scottish people didn't, they wanted to remain, yeah. fine. But unfortunately, they also wanted to stay part of the UK, and the UK voted to leave. <laughs> and I'm saying to you, why don't you honour the result of that referendum, and why don't you honour, actually, the wishes of the Scottish people in the original referendum there? You, you, you seem to be in a position where it doesn't matter what referendum <laughs> results come back, because you keep losing, you want to take the ball and have it replayed. Well, I, th I think we've established that I don't agree with you on that point, but you are, albeit I assume unwittingly and inadvertently, becoming a fantastic advocate for Scottish independence because in 2014 we were told that our voice would be heard, we were an equal partner in the UK, we should lead, not leave the UK. Here we are a few years later and we're being told... Uh, your voice doesn't matter. You were outvoted by the rest of the UK, so just shut up and accept being ripped out of the European Union against our will. That's not a, a particularly attractive argument for the Westminster political union. Let's be independent, in charge of our own future, and then have a relationship of equality with others across the United Kingdom, but also be able to play our full part in the European Union can I just and the ask wider you, can world. Nicholas That's can I the just better ask, future Because what Scotland. I think viewers uh, will, will hear over and over again is this idea that a referendum is a once-in-a-generation decision. We got told that about the Brexit mm. referendum, we got told that about the 2014 Scottish independence referendum. If you held another referendum on Scottish independence and you lost again, would you then keep pushing for another referendum? What I'm saying is, do voters just not believe that referendums are the end of it oh. anymore? They are to be replayed and replayed I, until someone gets the result they want. 
Well, firstly, your question uh, is hypothetical, or at least I'm going to treat it as hypothetical, because I think if uh, when Scotland makes this choice again, it will choose independence. But I guess the more philosophical point here is, in a democracy, is it ever right for politicians to tell uh, the, the voters that they are not allowed to change their mind? I mean, referendums can either be final or they can be democratic, because in a, a democracy, when circumstances change, voters should always have the right to change their mind, just as they do in elections every few years. So that, I guess that's the more fundamental and philosophical point. But of course, I'm confident that uh, when Scotland makes this choice again, it will choose to be independent. Uh, okay. That will mean the best of relationships with the other part of the British Isles, but it will also mean we can make our own decisions and chart our own course. Do you believe First Minister being open and honest and giving a straight answer to a straight, simple question? <laughs> I, I, I fear a trap opening yeah. up ahead Not of all the years, so fire away. OK, well, <laughs> Boris Johnson was asked at the weekend, after the Theresa May, you know, wheat field thing, what was the naughtiest thing he'd ever done? Oh, the naughtiest thing I've ever done? I'm not... I, you're the it... last person... <laughs> you're the last person on the face of the planet that I would admit my naughtiest ever you thing You can share to. it with so me, Nicola don't even Sturgeon. Try. Come on, what was... <laughs> I, I can only imagine no. it's slightly naughtier than running through a wheat field. <laughs> uh, I can confirm that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to share any more little tidbits of your naughtiest thing. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to wisely... I, I have uh, advisors off camera right now who are looking absolutely horror-struck. Is that, well, because, they know. Is that because they know the answer to the question? I'm going to take the fifth. No, they don't, they don't know either. Uh, so they're not horror-struck because they know what you might say? <laughs> no. But as I say, you are the last person I would tell, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, Mr. Sturgeon, we always appreciate you coming on. You're a regular visitor, and we greatly appreciate your company <laughs> in the morning. Thank you very much. Well, that wraps up our chat, or the interview with Nicola Sturgeon there, folks. Uh, happy holidays, everybody.